Hi guys, it's Philip Starr here. And today I'm going to talk about recoverable versus non-recoverable scenarios within your application and why you should design your system to, to be able to handle and identify both of them scenarios. So if you receive a message into your system, say from an inbound feed, if you hit hard validation edits and you know if you play that message in again and again and again, it's going to fail every single time because of the validation edits, because the data is bad, the JSON is bad, the XML is bad, then that's a non-recoverable scenario. You don't want to replay that in. But if you hit, say, a data access exception, so maybe there's a network failure, then you want to retry that. So what you can do is use spring aspects to wrap um, to retry certain methods if they throw exceptions. So I'm going to show you that example. But what you can also do is design your whole system to retry. So you basically disregard the message completely and restart from scratch the whole entry to your application. So both ways are very effective. And I'm going to show you both here. So I hope you enjoy. Hi guys. So I have a, a simple Spring Boot application that has one RESTful service that is exposed at service version one contracts and we pass in a contract number via a path variable. And what that does is it'll look in a contract repository. So it'll search get in the contract repository. And in that, I'm just mocking out a contract. So I'm creating a contract, setting the contract number, setting the name to Philip, printing that out and returning the contract. So if I just quickly run that, run as Spring Boot application, open up Google Chrome, there you can see contracts three, contracts four, five. So the service is working. So what we want to do now is introduce some retry functionality. So as I mentioned in my previous clip to that, we want to, we want to retry based on certain methods. So this isn't retrying the whole entry to the application, but retrying for example, um, service calls or data access calls. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use Spring Retry. So if you open up your Palm, and we're going to bring in two dependencies. So one is the Spring Boot Starter AOP, and the other one is Spring Framework Retry. So once you bring in them two dependencies, do a Maven update, bring them in on, the, on your build path, and the first thing we want to do is go to your apps main method and you want to annotate that with enable retry. Once you've done that, we then want to go ahead and create a configuration class. We're going to call this retry config. Okay, now you want to annotate that with configuration because it's going to be a configuration bean. And then what, what we want to do is create a bean. And the bean is going to be the retry template. So go ahead and what we want to do is create a simple retry policy. And this is where we can set the maximum attempts. So this is the maximum number of attempts that the method is going to be retried when an exception is thrown from that method. So we're going to set that to five. And now what we want to do is create a uniform random backoff policy. Oh, sorry, let me just correct that. And in your backoff policy, this is going to be the, the amount of time it's going to sleep in between the attempts of the method. So you want to set the maximum and the minimum. So we're going to set the minimum to 500 milliseconds. 
and we're going to set the maximum to three seconds. So it's important that you do not set a fixed time. I'm a big fan of not setting a fixed time as if you have multiple failures at the same time, all these threads are going to go to sleep. Everything's going to be retried at the same time. Well, if you have different threads sleeping at different times or different retry attempts at different times or timed intervals, then you may have more of a chance of succeeding. So what you want to do now is create a retry template. Sorry about my typing, guys. So create your new retry template, and then you want to set the policies. So retry template dot set retry policy. Set the retry policy. And set the back off policy. The back off policy, and then return your retry template. So now we've configured a retry template. So to sum up, we created a retry template which is going to retry, have a retry policy, which is going to retry a maximum five times when an exception is thrown. And we have a back off policy where we're going to sleep for a minimum of 500 milliseconds and a maximum of 3000 milliseconds in between each attempt. So now what we want to do is actually create our retry method or our aspect that's going to actually retry our methods. So if you go ahead and create an aspect, so we're going to call this aspects we're going to try this retry aspect you want to annotate that with aspect and you want to annotate that with component so spring bit will automatically pick up the, the aspect and now what you want to do is auto wire the retry template in And now what you want to do is create a spring aspect with a round device. And what you want to do is take in a preceding join point. And you can say retry template dot execute. You want the callback, so the retry callback. We're going to use a lambda here, and then we're going to say point dot proceed, and that's going to throw throwable. So we need that throws throwable to the to the method. Add throws declaration, and now we need some um, join point to actually put our advice around. So what we want to say is we want to surround the execution of any method type in the package com followed by any package. And the class name is going to start with anything but it has to end in repository. And then any method in the repository with any number of arguments. So now you can see that we have our advice and you can see it advises com start contract repository contract repository dot get. So that's our actual repository mock implementation. So it's going to advise that. And what we can see here is that it's if our DAO method throws an exception, it's going to actually retry that a maximum of five times and have the back off in between each attempt. So if I go back to my repository and instead of returning the contract, I'm just going to throw an illegal state exception. Throw new illegal state exception, import that in. And what we're going to do is run the application. So 
So contracts five. See, if there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, fifth, and then the exception. So as you can see, we've automatically retried the DAO method five times with very few lines of code. So what we've done here is actually by using the aspect, we've allowed us to do basically a, a really a coarse grained implementation and coarse grained scope of which DAO methods will be retried. So instead of doing that, you can actually annotate your methods directly. So inside your repository, you can actually annotate this with retry, so retryable. And so you don't need to use the aspect. So the, both approaches have advantages and disadvantages. If you want to make sure all your DAO methods are going to retry, you could use the aspect. Or if you want to have the fine grain control, you can use the annotation directly on the method. So that's one approach to retry. I definitely suggest that because you're going to have lots of maybe potential network failures in your application or, or uh, recoverable exceptions to do with um, data access or, or other activities. And the other thing I mentioned was retrying the whole message into your application. So here we have retries based on fine-grained functionality within the app. But you actually want, if that fails the five times, you actually want to retry the whole message into your system up to a maximum number of times. And you want to have an incremental uh, wait time in between each attempt. So that's going to be very beneficial in your system because if your system is down, your messages will simply go on. You can, if the message fails to play, you can put it on a retry queue and say every 15 minutes, you're going to pull all of the messages out of the retry queue and try and play them into your system. Or instead of using queues, you could use a database. You could insert the rule into the database and then you could have the likes of a quartz timer that will pull and will pick up all the messages at a certain interval and try to play them into the system one by one or in, or concurrently. So there's lots of different ways to, to implement this. So I definitely advise that you use both retry. So retry on the fine-grained actual code methods and the retry of the whole business logic of your of your message coming in. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Subscribe for more content and I will see you next time.